Hello, hello. Am I audible to everyone? Yes. Okay, so very good morning all the students, uh, all the guests of the dignitaries and of the dais, madam. Thank you so much for giving me such a nice opportunity. I must say the campus is beautiful and uh, very clean and neat. I am very much impressed with the campus. Uh, so good morning to all the students. I don't want anybody to sleep in my lecture. Promise? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'll begin. So today's my topic, as you all know, it's in polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, I think everybody is well known regarding this syndrome because it's been, uh, it's very common these days. It's a very serious condition. It's mostly commonly seen in uh, the adolescent age group in the girls of all your age, it's become very serious. Why? The only reason is uh, lifestyle changes, what we are leaving it. Uh, so the main reason for the polycystic ovarian syndrome is nothing but the lifestyle changes. The way we live, the way we eat, the way we work in the entire day, all this thing matters and it becomes a one cluster of syndrome that is called as a polycystic ovarian syndrome. Later on, in the, as soon as the slides begins, I will just explain you what is the exact definition of the polycystic ovarian syndrome. In my OPD, I see every fifth or sixth girl coming with the polycystic ovarian syndrome. So out of 25 to 30 patients, there are 5 to 10 patients who are suffering from PCOS. So it has become a very, very serious condition and why I chose this topic is to let you, to get aware about this so that you can still change your lifestyle and uh, think about it, become strict regarding what you want to eat, how you want to live, uh, how much walking, meditation, avoiding junk food matters. So please take it this very, very serious before the time passes and uh, try to follow, try to follow some timetable, a schedule in your life. Let your mothers don't shout on you, you yourself become strict and uh, uh, follow some diet pattern, follow some living pattern by yourself, okay? So let's begin with the slide. Uh, Okay. Okay. So basically what is PCOS? what happens inside your body in a condition called as PCOS. So you, everybody knows that we have two ovaries, one uterus and two fallopian tubes, right? So what happens in a PCOS? Now these two ovaries becomes very bulky. Bulky in the sense they become very huge in the size compared to the normal size. They have, each ovary have 10 to 12 number of follicles. Now what are follicles in a uh, layman terminology? Follicles means they are like a small, let's say balloons. Have you seen a small balloons, right? So the balloons filled with water, number of 10 to 12 number of follicles are there in each ovaries. So the ovaries basically become double the size of your normal ovaries. This is the clinical picture in PCOS. It happens in both the ovaries, the same picture. The uterus remains normal, but your, both the ovaries get affected. Okay, I'll come to it the next. What is the reason for that? Okay, so uh, I would say what now you must be worried. What are the symptoms? regarding the PCOS, like what happens. Okay, so it's just not the one syndrome you have it. It's not like one symptom you have it that I have irregular periods and I'm suffering from PCOS. It's not that, okay. So it's like two to three symptoms if you have out of four or five, which according to the our Ishre publications they have placed, then they are called as a PCOS. If you have one symptom among the four, please don't name it as a PCOS. 
okay so you shouldn't be worried if you have one symptom and then saying that you have a PCOS okay so next time when you see a fat girl don't critic her because she might be in need of a medical help please this happens I've seen it happens in the colleges it happens in the schools okay you shouldn't uh, say anything or you shouldn't criticize any girl because you never know what is happening with that girl okay if she is fat if she is dark if she have a acne if she is losing her hair because all these are symptoms of PCOS and it can happen to any one of us because it's common it's very very common so please don't don't criticize anybody who is obese or who is having any of these symptoms okay uh, is she uh, another symptom is the weight gain okay in PCOS you suddenly start putting on the weight so much that you can't even control I have a patient they come to the OPD saying that that uh, madam I am not eating but I'm still putting on my weight okay so it's a yeah it's a worrisome problem I can understand that but it's nothing to get so much tense that you stop eating your food you have to maintain a certain diet chart you have to follow the diet chart you have to meet a dietitian if you don't want to meet a dietitian it's okay but you shouldn't reduce your diet okay instead of that what I would advise is you should do you should work on it you should do a jogging you should do walking you should go to the gym I can understand the students will have a busy schedule you have to study so much half of the day goes in the school and the another half of the day goes into study but I'm I'm sure at least you all will have 15 to 20 minutes in a day right instead of chit chatting going to Pani Puri place and all uh, just 15 to 20 minutes of a walk is enough for every one of us okay that would be every day 15 to 20 minutes walk let's take a decision and start it from today itself yes <laughs> okay. Uh, is she troubled by the facial hair, acne, irregular menstrual periods? If she is married, why can't she become pregnant? So all these are the, some of the symptoms, and these are all the question which I think most of us will have it, and I'll answer them for sure. Okay. So I'll be the covering under this following topics. It's a definition, incidence, causes, pathophysiology. What are the symptoms? Long-term risk treatment and uh, uh, then conclusion okay so now this is the definition proper definition of the ter term PCOS who discovered the PCOS now PCOS was discovered by Leventhal and the stain in 1935 okay so PCOS is a syndrome manifested by amenorrhea hirsutism obesity associated with enlarged polycystic ovaries I'll explain each of them now what is amenorrhea let's say not amenorrhea but I could, I could have put it up as an irregular periods amenorrhea is basically no periods okay but not necessarily that you will not have periods at all you might have a periods but it must be irregular it wouldn't be a regular period which the normal cycle is uh, uh, monthly monthly right now let me explain you what are the normal cycles because most of the girls don't know what is a normal pattern they just get worried and they go and uh, come to the clinic saying that I don't have a normal period so the normal cycle is from 25 to 28 days okay so anywhere between 25 to 28 days is normal cycle okay each period lasting for two to seven days I'm repeating it two to seven days anything less than two days it's scanty anything more than seven days is excessive period okay so two to seven days 25 to 28 days cycle this is a normal pattern of the cycle anything less than this anything more than this is abnormal so the girls if she are not having periods regularly means the days are like 40 45 days of cycle then they should be worried and I think then they should go to the clinic but that is okay okay so irregular period is one of the PC uh, one of the symptom for the PCOS then uh, comes the hirsutism what is hirsutism hirsutism means there is an excessive hair growth okay abnormal hair growth let's say on the faces okay so you will have it on the chin you might have it on the cheeks and these are the excessive kind of hair growth on the facial uh, on the face 
So it could be one of the symptoms for the PCOS. Okay, another one is the obesity. As I ex already explained, obesity means excessive weight gain. Okay, so they put on a weight gain. Suddenly, there's sudden weight gain, uh, which you can't. It's over a two to three months. They might put on some five to six kgs. Uh, even if they are not eating, you will start putting on so much of weight. Okay, I will tell you the reason why it happens in the PCOS later in the other slides. Okay, so what it is? It's a heterogeneous disorder which is characterized by excessive androgen production by the ovaries that interferes with the reproductive endocrine and the metabolic function. So in PCOS there is an there is something called as an androgen. Androgen is there in all of us. It's kind of a hormone. So instead of normal it has become excessive. The ovaries have started, the pituitary gland has started producing more of androgen. So there happens the excessive hair growth on the face, as I already explained, on the cheeks, on the chin and on the uh, forehead. So this all uh, hair which are not to be seen normally, it happens. And so this is the reason for the PCOS, excessive androgen production, one of the reasons for PCOS. Okay, so I'll explain as this omenuria, obesity and hirsutism, right? Now when to say it is a PCOS, as I already explained you, if you have just one symptom out of this four to five symptoms, please don't name it as a PCOS, okay? It, there should be, it's a, you consult a doctor, you consult a gynecologist, go to her, let her decide whether you have PCOS or no. Just by reading Google or just by talking to your friends or neighbors or anybody, please don't tell it that just because she have a PCOS, I might have a PCOS because I have irregular periods. It is not, not necessary at all. You go to a doctor, you show them and let them decide what is it is. If you have PCOS, they will treat you accordingly. And all PCOS doesn't require treatment, okay? It is not something you have to worry about, right? So if two of the three following criteria are present, as I told, polycystic ovaries in the name itself. Now the syndrome is a polycystic ovarian syndrome, okay? So the polycystic ovaries, that means either 12 or more peripheral follicles, 2 to 9 mm in diameter or increased ovarian volume, uh, by more than 10 centimeter cube or there is an oligo or an ovulation. Now you will ask me what is an oligo or an ovulation as I already explained. Now we all know in the normal cycle pattern which I already told you 25 to 28 days usually the ovulation happens on the 14th day. Right? Now I hope everybody knows what is ovulation. Everybody knows what is ovulation or should I explain it? Yes or no? Ovulation is the release of an egg, okay? So it happens between 12 to 14 days if you have a cycle pattern between 25 to 28 days. So now usually what happens in polycystic ovarian syndrome is there is a no ovulation. That is called as a an ovulation or there is an oligoaminuria. That means your periods are irregular. So this happens in the PCOS. Right, and there are some signs of uh, hyperandrogenism, as I told, excessive hair growth on the face. Okay, now this is what we call it in our terminology as a Rotterdam diagnostic criteria. There is a polycystic ovaries on ultrasound picture, there is an anovulation, there is an excessive androgen. Okay, so why, as I told you, why you have to worry about it? What is the incidence? As I already told, if there, I have 25 patients in the OPD, out of 25, there are 10 to 12 girls who are having a PCOS. And that is the reason why we have to discuss about this topic very, very seriously. Okay, so the most common endocrine disorder affecting 5 to 10 percent of women of reproductive age 15 to 45 years between, right? Incidence is increasing fast with the change in the lifestyle and stress disorders. Okay, most frequent 20% causes infertility in the woman. What is the infertility? Everybody knows what is infertility? Infertility is the woman who is unable to conceive over a period of time. Okay, if she is married, let's say for uh, uh, two years, three years, not using contraceptive 
for over a period of one year and she is not able to conceive we name it as an infertility okay she is infertile so then she has to do it for the more test that's all so there are some problems in pcos some 20 to 30 percent of pcos women are having infertility issues they are not able to conceive naturally after their marriage okay this happens because of an ovulation because there is no ovulation happening in them so the result is infertility okay so it's all associated with each other okay there is excessive androgen production so you are putting on so much of weight as you are putting on so much there's excessive fat in your body excessive fat in your body lends to the disturbance in the ovarian function disturbance in the ovarian function leads to the an ovulation means there is no ovulation happening if the egg is not releasing there are and there are no chances of you becoming a pregnant so the infertility rate is 20 to 30 percent in uh, pcos women okay it is strongly associated with insulin resistance that creates risk for diabetes cardiovascular disorders and hypertension now please don't think that it only affects ovary okay it's not that the ovary only gets affected if you have pcos over a period of time if you don't control it you might have a diabetes you know because they all have insulin resistance over a period of time you will develop a diabetes okay you will have some cardiovascular problems you will have some heart problems later on in the life when you grow okay you might have a hypertension as well so these are all the risk factors which will come slowly if you don't start thinking it when you are in a young age okay what are the causes now as i already told no clearly no need it, there would be a change in the lifestyle diet and stress there are some genetic factors they say in our books it is given that there is some cyp21 gene mutation okay it runs in the families it is a hereditary condition okay so if your mother or if your sister if somebody is having it pcos that means that i'm not saying that every one of you will have it the pcos but yeah it is a hereditary as uh, how the hypertension or how the diabetes goes hereditary even pcos goes hereditary as well okay so ob uh, obesity causing insulin resistance and the hyperinsulinemia okay so this is a chart but you i don't think you will understand so let's go now what is the pathophysiology for pcos okay so this is a cycle but i'll just explain you in a very easy terminology okay now every one of us know that we have a pituitary gland in the brain right so this pituitary gland release androgen hormone now what happens in a normal individual there is a normal release of the androgen but what happens in the pco is there is an excessive androgen production from the pituitary gland pituitary gland releases so much of androgen okay so further what happens is as the uh, androgen increases there is an increase in the lh lh is the luteinizing hormone from the ovary as the LH is increased, the FSH is increased. So PCO is basically is nothing but is all just a hormonal disturbance. Okay, your FSH increases, your LH decreases, your there is excessive androgen production, all these things, just a hormonal imbalance in the PCOS. Okay, so you will not much understand, but you just uh, think that it is all associated with each other when the uh, pituitary gland increases the androgen androgen will cause the excessive androgen production which will cause excessive hair growth hair growth or alopecia or you will some girls will have acanthosis nigricans what is called as there's a blackening in the neck behind okay so that could happen because of excessive androgen production further this androgen will increase the fat production in your body so fat production means you are becoming obese okay if you are becoming obese it is disturbing your ovarian functions now lh is been increasing from the ovary so the ovary gets basically disturbed okay so because of this increase in lh you are having an ovulation or you are having a periods problem so it is all a virtuous cycle it is all associated with each other that is the reason when somebody comes to your opd we say please change your lifestyle or please decrease your weight if you are obese okay because the moment you decrease your weight the androgen production decreases immediately it doesn't happen in you know, overnight but it happens over a period of five to six months so you have to try and try okay
okay so this is a pathology which i already uh, explained you now uh, you know uh, we have a liver and pancreas now what does the pancreas secret pancreas secret there is something called as an insulin okay now this everybody knows that diabetes what happens there is an insulin resistance in the diabetes people okay so there is an excessive increase of the insulin resistance and so there is an hyperglycemia genetic factors are also important but let's say that it's not as much as dependent but there are some genes they say some scientists have proved that some genetic factors are also playing role in the pcos okay so as i already told there is an increase in the lh there is a decrease in the fsh an increase in the androgens which all leads to the polycystic ovaries okay what happens actually okay um, already explained now these are the some symptoms if everybody anybody wants to take a picture please take the picture of this slide it's very very important now symptoms of the ovary dysfunction okay there is an oligoaminuria as i already told you the periods are very 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 irregular that means it can go beyond 45 to 60 days some girls will have no periods for 2 to 3 months in a easy terminology i'm explaining you what is oligoaminuria it is nothing but the periods which is 45 to 60 days anywhere between that that means you will not have a period for 2 to 3 months okay uh, irregular uterine bleeding 26% is the incidence infertility another 20% of the in incidence now what is the symptoms of excessive androgen as i told hirsutism excessive hair growth there is a acne on the face there is a alopecia or a baldness some girls will start losing the hair from the center that is also the one of the symptom for the pcos symptoms of the insulin resistance is acanthosis nigricans there is a darkening there is a black line which you can see in the nape of the neck okay and obesity as i as i already explained okay so these are some of the pictures of hirsutism there is a hair growth acne or there is a baldness right this is what i call uh, what you call as an acanthosis nigricans okay there is an blackening darkening near the nape of the neck thick pigmented skin over the nape of the neck inner thigh axilla due to the insulin resistance it happens only because of the insulin resistance now what are the long term risk okay so it's not that if your pcos you are done with that you only have pcos over a period of time you may suffer from all this problem as and when you grow okay you might have diabetes you might have heart disease you have hypertension dyslipidemia breast cancer endometrial cancer recurrent pregnancy losses ovarian failure you will stop your periods before the age itself okay that is called as premature menopause in our term that means 35 years you will stop having periods okay so these are all nothing to worry about but all these things should be in your mind that you might have all this long term risk after uh, over a period of time okay now i'll just summarize it okay so as i told what are the reason for that genetics and the lifestyle changes because of that there is an hormonal changes obesity exacerbates the hormonal changes increase in the androgens which causes hirsutism and the acne there is an increase in the ovarian follicles which will cause increase in the estrogen there is so because of that it leads to the menstrual disturbances and self fertility lifestyle changes can cause increase in the insulin what you call as an insulin resistance and which can lead a diabetes no there is no reason to panic as i already explained everyone out it's very common but there is nothing something which you have to really panic about it it is not something like a cancer or malignancy okay let me explain you but if you don't take care of your lifestyle then you might lead to all such problems so why to create such problems okay you create awareness in yourself that nobody should come and tell you and uh, you might then not have this all these problems at all okay so it's no more a difficult task to diagnose and treat pcos get an ultrasound done as soon as possible take a simple and the healthy diet okay exercise and the lifestyle changes very very important the last two points i am saying it exercise and the lifestyle changes are the only two things which will help you from not having an pcos 20 to 25 minutes a walk that's all what we need as that's all 
avoid taking junk food i know when you are staying outside your home when you are in a hostel because i also lived in a hostel so i know how the hostel life is but i'm not saying that you don't eat but avoid eating packet food what i'm trying to say okay avoid eating junk food avoid eating anything avoid cold drinks avoid all this thing you will not realize now okay you will realize later on uh, as and when you grow that you will have such problems i'm sure okay now i'll just uh, tell you the treatment for this you don't have to you just come to me i'll tell you the treatment for that okay so pco is uh, i'm not saying that all of you require the treatment okay you do exercise and lifestyle changes only some women who are having a very very serious symptom so the doctor will decide if you really need a treatment or you don't need a treatment so there is some treatment for sure you don't have to worry and let me tell you one thing this pco is once it comes it is there forever till you die okay it doesn't go so i have a patients coming to the clinic they say that madam jatu to rese ne pcos or kai serious to nahi ne it will not go but it is not something which you have to worry also about okay if it is there now it is there it will not go whatever you do it will not go okay it will just stop showing you the symptoms but the features will always be there it is there it will be there for life long but you don't have to worry about it okay just keep it in your mind that i am i'm i i have to stop eating junk food i will do some exercise that's all at least if you are at least i'm sure that you will not put on the weight if you do exercise if you don't lose the weight because i have patients they say that madam i am doing exercise two three months i exercise i'm going to the gym but i'm not losing weight i'm sure if you don't lose weight but i'm sure that you will not at least put on the weight okay so please continue doing if you are exercising please continue it i am 100% sure you will not gain the weight whatever is there it will be there but you will not gain your weight okay so you these are the some treatments for the pcos we don't give everybody only if it is serious we give it okay now conclusion this 20 slides were just an attempt to show the importance of this health hazard in a woman and the serious consequences it may bring about when ignored or not treated okay psoas comes among the list of disease that need to be hunted not only treated right with awareness we can easily fight this disease which i think has already started now via this slide show so i hope in the days to come everyone among us will circulate this information and hunt this disease down at the earliest okay because no matter who we are we need a woman to maintain the continuity of the life maybe as a mother a sister or a wife so with a little modification of the famous message nowadays let's say that pcos is there god couldn't be everywhere so he created woman right <laughs> so let us give a applause to all of us on a women's day <laughs> we in our hand we ha- it's god has given us an opportunity to you know we are the one who is responsible for this generation for the coming generation you know we have been able for capable for that so let's take first care of ourselves okay let's take some decision on this women's day take some uh, uh, decision that yeah i will not have this i will change my lifestyle i will stop doing this i will because once it comes it comes it doesn't go it will not go at all but you at least you if you are already if some if some girls already are suffering from it there is nothing to worry about but you please start doing some lifestyle modifications in your life okay don't uh, take it so serious or don't take it so lightly as well do something create some awareness in yourself and please stop googling about it at all okay i know everybody have a phone everybody have a internet everybody have a google so everybody will start googling what it is right so please stop google it because i am telling you half knowledge is more dangerous than no knowledge either you should have no knowledge or you should have complete knowledge about it okay but the half knowledge is more dangerous so stop googling about it if you have some problems you consult a gynecologist but don't ever ever google it or don't ask your friend tane pan pcos che tane a thai che to mane pan pcos che no don't blame yourself okay 
Okay, thank you so much for attention. And uh, I would like to thanks to the principal, madam, everybody to give me this opportunity. And uh, very huge crowd. Thank you so much. I wish you everybody a happy Women's Day. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Now for an informative session and sparing her valuable time with.